And I'm back with another video on the Sun Gold Power 5 kilowatt battery that installs on the wall. I did a full install video on this exact battery, but as soon as I started using it, I realized I'm gonna need more capacity. So now I'm gonna be adding a second battery to my capacity stack. Because my overall goal here is to find an optimal amount of batteries that will power this shop through the day and through the night without overspending on the amount of batteries. That's what I like about these five kilowatt hour batteries are because you can install these in increments of five kilowatt hours rather than say 10 or 15 kilowatt hour batteries that are just massive. And typically they have to sit down here on the floor because they're so heavy. This already weighs, I think 111.6 pounds when I did uh, put it on the scale. So times that by three for a 15 kilowatt hour battery and you're well over 300 pounds, it's gonna be very hard to install on the wall. And the battery's setting right at 17% and it's still morning time here. But what's happened is that I have the inverter set to charge this battery once it reaches 15% because I don't want the, to be drained too low. Mm -hmm. So the inverter automatically starts pulling power from the grid to charge the battery up in case of an emergency, I will always have some type of capacity in the battery. But what I would like to see is if I have two batteries, if my capacity will stop somewhere around 25 to 20% and then the next day charge back up through the solar array. Now, what I'm really running into is if I have three days of cloudy weather, then I'm not gonna have enough solar generation to power the shop and to charge the batteries back up to 100%. And another avenue I might have to look at is expanding this solar array. Right now I've got six 370 watt Aptos solar panels that are bifacial panels, but I just don't know if this is enough panels to actually charge up that 10 kilowatt hours of capacity. Especially on days like today when there's absolutely no sight of the sun. And that's what I like about these five kilowatt hour of capacity batteries are that you can expand this a little at a time to find out your optimal amount of batteries. Now, I do know that I should have at least two of these. I did realize that putting in five kilowatt hours a battery was not gonna be enough for what I need. But the number two battery should put me right at that magic number for the amount of electricity that I'm using in this shop. And something that I haven't mentioned, but it's very obvious, is the space that this battery takes up. This is the wall mounted batteries, which I absolutely love because they don't stick out way far and take up a lot of room. You can mount them up on the wall, which is a little bit challenging. And you can see that in my full install video. I'll try to put a link right up here so you can check that out if you would like to. But once you get it installed like this, it's up out of the way and it only takes up a very little amount of room. So there's my hand. I can almost touch the wall with it. So I think the overall depth of that is right around six inches. So that's just something to point out if you're looking at uh, installing batteries on your solar system. All right, I'm gonna go get that other battery uh, out of the box. I'll do a small unboxing to show you what's actually included with every one of these batteries. And then I'll get it installed and I'll show you how to connect it in parallel. It doesn't matter what type of inverter that you're connecting it to, but there are some settings that you should be aware of when you're connecting multiple batteries together. And I'll show you exactly how to do the Sun Gold Power batteries. Let's bring these cables back over because I want to show you those in just a second. But something I don't like doing when taking this out of the box is laying it on its face because it has these buttons on the front and I'm scared it might damage them if you lay it down or scoot it around. So I always try to place it on the side or the back when I'm taking it out of the box or moving it around any. And this is what's included with the battery. You're gonna get two cables that connect to an inverter. In my install today with this battery, we're not connected to an inverter, so I won't even use these cables, but these are quality cables and you can definitely use them to connect to your inverter. And I did in my first install of the first battery, but today we're gonna to have to use these parallel connections that connect battery one to battery two, and you'll get a negative and a positive of that. Your mounting hardware, which 
I will be using because I'm not putting it in to a block wall or something like that. I'm gonna use different type of anchors for that, but they do include these anchors to allow you to put it into a block wall or brick or something of that sort. You get your user manual, you get a dry connector in here as well, and a communication cable, which is very important because you need the batteries to communicate with one another. And now that we know what's included, let me go get this thing installed and show you how to set this up in parallel. That was a lot easier this time than last time, because now I know what to expect. The first thing that you want to confirm before connecting in parallel is to make sure all the batteries are off. So I've turned that battery, this battery, I've turned the inverter off, the solar off, all the breakers off, and the EPS off. And I went a step further and turned off the transfer switch over to utility supply. So that's on, and this is off, this is the generator over here. And we'll want to disconnect that as well. And you could even go as far as going outside and turning the DC disconnect switch off. So now I'm completely safe to work on anything in this area without worrying about solar or utility power or anything coming from that inverter or these batteries. Let me show you how easy this parallel connection is. First, you'll want to take off these caps to your ports. You'll grab your cables and I'm just going to kind of pull it in behind these cables here, turn them the direction that I want them, and snap them into place. And then go over to the other battery, put this on the positive, and this on the negative. Now I want to connect that communication cable, and you'll put this one on the RS485B port and then we'll bring this cable over and we'll put it on the RS485C port. The next thing that we want to do is to look at these pins right here. This is going to be default setting when you get the battery. Everything turned off. So you'll want to go to the second pin and turn that pin to the on position. Everything else should stay off. For the number one battery, the number one pin should be on and everything else off. And now we need to turn the battery on to set the protocols to communicate with the inverter. So this is a screen that we're going to see. You're going to hit enter. We're going to go down to perimeter settings, hit enter. Then we're going to go to both of these. Although we're using the 485 protocol, we're going to set both of them to the Lux Power inverter because that's the type of inverter that we've got this connected to. So let's go down, enter, and then Go down to Lux Power, hit enter, and then hit enter again, and then hit escape. Now we want to go down to the 485 protocol, hit enter, go down to the Lux Power, enter, and enter, and escape. Now we have the protocols for this to communicate with the inverter. We need to turn on this battery because that communication cable is running up into this battery, and then that communication cable is running up into this inverter, we are safe to turn the inverter on. I'm just gonna turn those three on. We'll leave solar and everything else off, but now we have the inverter actually turned on, and you'll see right up here in the corner that the batteries will pick up in just a second, and it just now kicked on we can see that we're at 37% between the two batteries. And I want to get to the amp hours, 200 amp hours of capacity. So we have 100 amp hours there and 100 amp hours here. I want to turn the solar back on. I'm going to turn the load back on because when I go to switch the transfer switch over, I don't want all the power to go out. But sometimes there is a delay in that inverter when I do that. Then we'll turn this array back on and not forget the outside DC disconnect switch. Turn that on. And we should have solar power coming in to charge the batteries. And the last thing that I need to do is to switch this back over to generator supply. Let's turn that on. And now everything is running off the inverter and the batteries. 
and whatever little solar that we have coming in. And you can see that connecting these batteries in parallel is very, very simple to do. You made three connections on each battery and then you just set the protocols and it works just like that. So I'm very happy with how easy this is to expand. Now I'm gonna test this over the next several days. So we're gonna have some rain coming in. We got a little bit of sunshine supposed to happen at the end of the evening today. So we'll see if we can get these charged back up to 100% because right now with 200 amp hours of capacity, we're only running around 37% full. So I wanna to try to get that back to 100% and then start my test from there because that's typically how I like doing this to balance everything out in the system and then really give a good idea if this is gonna be enough to run my shop here. This really just depends on your overall consumption of energy is how many of these batteries or whatever batteries you have, how much you're gonna need, how much capacity do you need? That really just comes down to your overall goals. And I'm gonna to continue to use my system as I regularly would because currently I have a 24,000 BTU, 240 volt uh, mini split running. I have another 9,000 BTU, 120 volt mini split running, 25 lights that were running in the ceiling and miscellaneous things plugged in uh, around the plugs around the shop here. So I'm gonna to continue to use it like I would on a daily use. We're gonna see if the sun comes out today to help charge a little bit of this. And if it doesn't, we'll get it back to 100%. And I'll continue to run those tests for the next several days and then I'll follow up with you. After several days of use in a good mix of weather between very cloudy and very sunny, I'm pretty happy with the baseline of 10 kilowatt hours of capacity. Do I think I'll have to expand this in the future? I'm about certain that I will, simply because I'm gonna be installing a bathroom in the office area here, and that's gonna drastically increase the amount of consumption that I'll be using because I'm gonna be installing a 30 amp hot water heater that's fully electric in that. So of course, I'll have to expand this so that hot water heater can heat up uh, when it needs to. But the good news is, that the system is very simple to expand in capacity, which I demonstrated how simple it was to put this battery and get everything connected. That's gonna go on down the way. I could do that for 32 batteries. That's just insane. I got enough room for one more battery so I can go up to 15 kilowatt hours of capacity on these wall mount batteries right here. If I go to put more, I would probably put them below so I don't have to lift them up so high, but these are pretty cool. I really do like them. I'll definitely put a link in the description below. So if you're interested in those, go check them out. These are a very high quality battery. Sun Gold Power has been in business since 2014. So they're not a brand new company and they stand behind these batteries with a 10 year warranty. And my overall goal with this video was to demonstrate how easy it is to connect two of these batteries into parallel to expand a system. So if I wanted to put four batteries up here, it's really easy to do. And I wanted to show you how to do that and make sure that we're setting the parameters correctly and the switch at the bottom correctly. And you would have no problem doing that yourself. And if I was able to achieve that, I ask you one favor, smash the thumbs up button because it really does help me out. And I appreciate that. Also, if you're interested in and other solar related videos like this, you may consider subscribing to the channel because I put out new videos on batteries and inverters and power stations and things of that sort quite often. So you may be interested in something I put out in the future, or you can go back and check out all the other different videos that I've put out in the past. And I'll leave links in the description below. And I'll put a couple uh, cards up here so you can check that out. Maybe they're relevant to you. I hope to catch you in my next one.